Welcome back, Zero K fans, to another exhibition match. This time we're watching Ikins versus the Sponge. On there's a new map that I'm, well, not a new map, but I haven't, I haven't seen much called Quicksilver. And let's get it started. So we have Ikins in the bottom left corner of the map. Not sure what he's starting out with. Same with the Sponge in the top right corner of the map. Started with Cloaky Bots and Ikins is might be starting with the vehicles. This map is actually fairly isn't too small and is very flat, so vehicles might work. Though I would not be surprised if we went for bots, just because that's a common start. Mind you, I'm not 100% sure the... It's hard to tell, I'm not sure if the vehicles would actually be able to path along this. There appears to be a bit of an... Yeah, there's... Well, okay, it's a bit hard to tell. It's the, no, it's the frequency of the colors changing, but... It appears that this slope is a little bit steeper at the very bottom of this ramp. And shield bots coming from McKin, so Finn's is... Going for a bit more of a defensive play, while the Sponge probably going for a bit more aggressive play. That's typically how Shields and Cloaky goes, though Shield Bandits are definitely powerful raiders. It's just more the later game tends to be a slow push for Shields, whereas for Cloakies it's just harass, 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 and stun everything out. Quite useful strategy, I quite enjoy it myself. So Cloakies are one of my favorite factories. Well, after spiders and gunships, I, I, I kind of like the quirky factories that people don't seem to like, but that's that's just me. I don't use spiders and gunships all that much. I actually quite like using heavy tanks. But beside the point, it's the Sponge getting in for his harassment. He lost a couple glaives rather uselessly, but he is able to find one of the metal extractors and deal with that. Now, Kins has a jump commander, and that allows him to just very nicely expand over to the south here. This map is rather unusually for 0k maps, very full of cliffs. It's patterned very similar to StarCraft maps, but not sure if it's meant to be based off of any. I don't think so, but it does have the same cliff based cliff and ramp based architecture. Very familiar to me. Kind of comforting in a way. And Warriors coming up for Okay, Warriors, Glaives, and a couple of Zeus will be coming up after all that for the sponge while Ikins is getting just bandits. Bandits and a builder. Nothing too special. So Kins is clearly not too concerned about these warriors. I mean, the bandits actually do do fairly well against warriors. Warriors will tear glaives to shreds, but they won't necessarily destroy bandits as easily. Right? Four or five bandits will be able to take out a warrior without too much issue. Now, two or three warriors with glaive support is a different story. But a single warrior on its own cannot reliably get rid of bandits, like it can with glaives. Against glaives, warriors just eat them. They just eat them up. They destroy them. Tear them to shreds. There's nothing that can really be done. But yeah, I'm a bit surprised he isn't going for some thugs. Outlaws, actually. Admittedly, currently outlaws are not as powerful as they used to be. But they're still fairly powerful. They're still a solid enough unit. But up going purely for bandits, not a terrible choice, but a little bit inflexible. And lots of glaives coming up for the sponge before he goes in with the Zeus's. And the thing is, I say inflexible because, like I said, one warrior wouldn't do especially well, but three or four warriors would probably tear him up. I don't see much way the bandits would get out of that. However, having outlaws with you would slow the warriors down to the point they pretty much wouldn't be able to do anything. And, of course, Roaches will just tear apart any army that gets thrown at you, given that Cloaky Bots are fairly cheap and tend to have relatively large armies. Roaches can work extremely well. But we'll see how just the Bandit versus Glaive match goes with the Sponge coming in. He's got his units all clumped up. This is terrible. Akins is lining up his units quite nicely, but the Sponge has clumped up all of his units. Akins making very good use of line move. In case you don't know, you can actually set up line orders for units, and that way they will maintain a certain formation as they move from place to place, which is great for surrounding, but the sponge is not taking advantage of that. He is merely right-clicking on the field and using that to get around. Which means the units are very much clumped up and are extremely vulnerable. The units cannot shoot through each other in 0k. This is a very important point. Units cannot shoot through each other. In some cases, units will end up hitting each other and killing each other, but usually the units will simply not fire if they can't hit. And the sponge unwisely moving in as warrior that will be torn apart by these bandits. There's no question about it. Although the bandits are running away regardless. I don't think 
Has Ikins seen this? Yes, he has seen that there is a unit coming in. I don't know if he knows that it's a warrior, but he does know that there is something moving in here. On the other hand, the sponge does not actually have... Oh, it has radar viewing the bandits coming in, but he didn't see them until just recently, just as I was actually showing what he could see. And the sponge is pretty poorly defended in his main base. These bandits will tear it apart. Warrior is coming in. The Glaives, however, are the best bet. One in the base will not deal any damage. The rest coming in. They should have been going for a flank. That, unfortunately, they are not. One of the bandits is going down, but the Glaives turret only able to take out one. The Glaives are trying to come in to deal with them, and the bandits, like I said before, are actually... They're in a good position to deal with the Glaives, but they weren't in the best position. The Glaives able to take them out. Actually, able to even... Wow, able to get one-to-one, -one, pretty much. So that definitely scared away Akin somewhat. And there he goes, getting some rogues. He's not going for Thug Felon. I'm not sure on a map like this, I can sort of see why there are a lot of pass through and Thug Felon push could very easily get flanked. Th well, yeah, it could easily get flanked, so the Felon would be able to probably turn quickly enough to take care of anything anyway. And the Sponge, on the other hand, going for pretty hard push, actually, with defense turrets along the north side of the map. Nothing along the south side. He can easily get flanked along that. And Ikins nicely set himself up here. He had these metallic charges from the start, but he has some defenses as well over there, just to make sure. And the Sponge will be getting hit by the bandits. The Rogue trying to come in for support, but they can't really help too much against Glaives. They can help against the Warrior once it comes in, but not against Glaives. The Sponge continuing to upgrade his commander. Looks like he just went for a standard beam laser energy cell commander. Nothing too special. And Ikins continues to expand sneakily. Though he's actually behind an economy. He's about 4 metal behind. Well, so he's at 18 metal per second. Well, the sponge is at 22 with some extra from Reclaim. So he's doing quite well, though. He's... Yeah, most of his entire base is being nicely taken out. The sp now, the sponge... Actually, let's see, he has... Well, never mind that. We are getting a fight coming in, and we can count the metal extractors later, especially since they are going to be going down soon. But basically, the metal is actually about even now. Looks like Ikin's continuing to build up more. And the sponge has been reclaiming a little bit, getting some extra metal income. He also does have an army advantage, but a lot of that is for cost. A lot of that is this Zeus here. And rogues are great for dealing with Zeus's. Skirmishers, in general, are great for dealing with Zeus's just because of the range difference. That will be coming in handy. Warrior also about to get destroyed. Not able to really do anything. These rogues might be able to take it out if they predict his movement well, but it looks like they are not even able to see it enough to fire. Ikins just now once again getting radar view of those warriors, but not able to hit them. Now, on the other hand, Ikins does have much more of a secure position. He's moving out a bit more slowly. He didn't just take one side, he is kind of moving out in all directions. And the one spot he has taken and invested a lot into is a nice choke point. Liz turret taking out the warrior, and of course warriors can take out Liz turret without too much issue, so I don't see that being a big obstacle. With the Zeus's and warriors, those bandits did not stand a chance. This Liz turret also doesn't stand a chance, and this commander not in a great spot. The only downside of this position is there is no reinforcement, no additional factors or anything over here, so there's not much that... Ikins can do except run away, and being that he is a recon commander, running away is something he can do quite well, as we see just now with a jump. Now, the sponge on the other hand, getting a gunship plant, trying to finish the job with that, probably get some rapiers or maybe banshees just to tear apart Ikins' commander. And, oh, Ikins is a shotgun and showing off that he's helped support the game by getting a green shotgun. Because if you donate to the game, you get little, you get what are called kudos, and kudos can be used to buy cosmetic things like that. Like green shotgun shells. Which I think Ikins might also have a special recon commander skin, but it's a little bit hard to tell. Anyway, Zeus's are trying to come in to get rid of Ikins' commander. Despite its fancy green shotgun, it won't be able to deal with the Zeus's at all and needs to get out of there. And where are the rest of his rogues? They're all along the north side of the map, taking care of the sponge's base fairly well, but the commander is going down, so he cannot rely on the economy bonus from the commander, and that will help even out. Although Ikins. He does have more melee structures being built up, so even without his commander, he will not 
lose too much in the way of economy. He's still ahead of the sponge quite a lot. His harassment to the north is paying off. Basically, he gambited his commander, and it's paying off quite well. He lost his commander, but he's pretty much winning this war. Unfortunately for him, he doesn't have any riot units over to the north to deal with all of these glaives. And the rogues will go down fairly soon after. The bandits could do a decent job, but what he needed either was, like I said, felon sub combo or possibly outlaws. Outlaws are a bit risky, but they would hold the glaives in place or slow them down enough that the rogues could actually deal with them. And, of course, help the bandits deal with them, but the bandits don't need that much help. Every bit counts, though. So it would have been a nice thing to have. And these Zeus's, on the other hand, are being surrounded somewhat by rogues, and that will be much more powerful. While Glaive's able to get rid of the raiding party, but bandits coming in will be able to surround them, will be able to take them out, while the Zeus's at the south are tearing apart the rogues. The rogues not out of range enough to make that range advantage matter. That is looking... Well, it's starting to turn around, it almost looks like, for Akins. He doesn't have any builders over to the southeast, so we can't rebuild that area that easily. And the main builder he had was, of course, his commander, which could jump, and these metal extraction points are down, and there's nothing here to deal with them. Of course, the Zeus, on the other hand, is also going down. A couple more Zeus is coming in. They will be in a worse position to deal with the rogues, but even then, these bandits can't easily deal with them, so there isn't a whole lot of support. Those Zeus's are still marching right in the sponge. There are those Banshees building more of them, just... Looks like he's infinitely building Banshees. While getting more Glaives, Rockos, and Zeus... Or getting Rockos now as well. He hasn't actually put them to use yet. Just working on the Zeus's. And the Zeus's are doing a nice job. I'm a bit surprised that no Roach has come up for Akins. Are there Roaches planned? No, there are no Roaches. Just Rogues and Bandits. And at this point, the numbers on the Rogues are increasing. They are... Well, they will be able to saturate Bomb out the Zeus's. But even then, a Rogue would just be... A rogue with some bandit distraction to hold off the Zeus fire so they can't actually shoot the rogue first. That would help a lot. But that's not going to help in this case. There's actually not a whole lot Ikins can do. This game has turned around. He almost had it, but unfortunately he did not manage to... Oh, there was a roach, but that didn't do anything. Unfortunately, it may have killed some glaives. That was about it. Yes, that's all it did was kill some glaives. And the Zeus will ultimately go down to these rogues and the laser turret, but... Even then, the Glaives go... No, the Glaives are going down before the Zeus can. And the Glaives are continuing to push in. I think Akins will be throwing in the towel any second now. Warriors trying to clean up the mess, getting rid of the bandits that are coming out to try to counterattack. And the Sponge isn't actually that well defended against counterattacks. He does have a couple laser turrets, but not much. He's mainly focusing on using the Zeus to deal all the damage he can. Which, thankfully for him, is quite a lot. These bandits going down pretty much in one shot to a Zeus. But that Zeus too heavily damaged to deal with anything. The warrior is trying to clean up, but unfortunately, unlike the Zeus's, they do not have nearly the health to deal with these rogues. And they're also not moving the right way to deal with them. One of them getting close enough to take out a rogue, but the other, but it will go down. The other one, not quite able to move fast enough for this. I still think outlaws would be the best thing to have here, just to slow these things down enough so the rogues... Like, the outlaw syndrome is very nice with rogues, because of the slow. It keeps them in place, the rogues can hit them. Because the rogues have, I think... I'm not sure if they have slower moving missiles than the Rockos, but it does seem like their missiles have to be more on target than the Rockos do. Their missiles do lob a bit. Rockos are a bit more direct along the ground. I'm not sure if that affects things. I've never actually really tested that too much. But regardless, the Sponge going for the killing blow with a large group of Banshees. No real anti-air. The Rockos have no chance. The Rockets cannot really hit. Not the Rockos. The Rogues have no chance. The Rockets can't really hit. Same goes for Rockos for the most part. The Bandits do have a chance, but not enough of them to really make a difference, unfortunately. So these Banshees will be ripping everything apart. Bandits doing what they can, but what they can will not be enough for the number of Banshees that have come in here. The only hope he has is to keep stuff alive long enough with the shields of the Convicts, but unfortunately one of the Convicts going is down, and the factory is now open to be attacked. The other Convicts will be going down fairly shortly, and with that, the shields and... With that, then, the Shieldbot factory. Razor's Kiss not able to be built, and... A counterattack being pushed forward by Akins. He's gonna go for this, and he should. His shieldbot factory is basically done for. He, I believe, he has some builders over in the north. Yes, he does. There is a convict to the north. He can rebuild, but it's gonna be very difficult. If he builds some defenders around the map, and then from there builds another factory, gets some anti-air. It doesn't really matter too much which. Though, 
Yeah, it doesn't really matter too much which. Against gunships, vandals, so getting another shield buff after getting vandals would probably work fairly well with the homing missiles. Though, frankly, that just kind of goes well for air, too. I mean, any anti-air at this point would do the trick. But it doesn't matter, he does not have any anti-air other than the bandits, and the bandits might be able to take out one gunship, but that's about it. And no, not even the one gunship. The rogue's going down soon after. Between the glaives and the banshees, there's nothing they can do. And the sponge has won this game. McKean's throws in the towel. Very nice back and forth. Very entertaining to watch, so hope you enjoyed that. That'll be it for me tonight. I'll be back next week, a new place, with 10 megabit upload speed, hopefully. It's, it's rated at 10 megabit. But it should be more than enough for me to get YouTube quality videos on Twitch. I'm actually thinking of probably just pushing stuff up to Twitch and then having it go from there to YouTube directly rather than doing the recompression and uploading from YouTube on my own computer and then uploading back to YouTube. I'm not sure, but it would save me some time. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that, and that will be it for me tonight. So have a good night, everybody.